Game time temperature is going to be right in the low 50s, maybe right around 50. Again, normal high this time of year in Rochester is in the mid-60s, around 65. So we're at 15 degrees cooler than normal. Braden Zink comes in with a record of 1-0 and a 3.50 ERA. This is his third appearance in the year. He's pitched six innings. He's allowed two hits, five runs, three earned runs. He's walked nine and struck out eight. So nine walks for Braden in six innings. If he can get the ball over the plate, I think that's been the key. I don't think anybody doubts that his stuff is varsity caliber and can get people out. Rochester as a team is a 2.22 ERA, and that's even with allowing seven runs last night. As a team, Rochester has 83 strikeouts and 60 innings, so this, they've been able to put people away. First pitch of the game, zinc to Joey Bland, is swing and a miss. Bland is a senior shortstop. Hitting 353 on the year. Six RBIs. Breaking ball is low. I mentioned Southwood. I think we mentioned in our little pregame show there that Southwood has hit three home runs and Mo Lloyd is at two of them. The other one belongs to this guy, Joey Bland. Ball ball. One and two the count. Southwood is in Class 1A, Sectional 52. That's the same sectional with Cast and Pioneer. They both received some votes in this week's poll. Got him looking with a breaking ball. A good start for Braden Zink. Braden's walk nine, but he's also struck out in eight and six innings. So he's got a pretty good strikeout rate. That'll bring up Micah Smith. Their sophomore center fielder. Mike is hitting 143 on the year. He's 2 for 14. Swing and a miss. What? Well, I had mentioned Mason Yentes was their center fielder last year. He was about as good a center fielder and leadoff man as we have seen in the conference in a long time and a tremendous defensive center fielder as well. Tough act to replace. That pitch is. Low or inside? One and two. You're uh, one and one. Excuse me. Breaking ball is high. Two and one. The count. The release point might have been a little bit off there on the breaking ball from Zink. Swing and a miss. Two and two. A high fastball. And Smith offered at it, and he kind of, I think, regretted that about halfway through the swing. Two and two. Got him swinging with a high fastball. So 
We went back to the high fastball. That will bring up their junior catcher, Mo Lloyd. As we mentioned, Mo is hitting 588 with two homers and 10 RBIs. He's 10 for 17 on the year. First pitch curve is in there. Oh and two. Well, again, this is this is when you want to face Mo Lloyd with nobody on base. Left-handed sluggers are few and far between in high school baseball, but Mo is one of them. One and two. Hit him with the pitch. That was a breaking ball that got away and hit him in the looks like the shoulder blade. Runner's first two outs and the batter is Blaine Hamilton, the sophomore. Blaine is hitting 375. Throw over. Lloyd is back. Three seventy five, no homers, five RBIs for Hamilton. Pitch is high. Lloyd dances off the bag, but he returns to first. One and zero. Throw over, runner back. Fouled off. Seems like the Zinc has good movement on his fastball. I think, I think Hamilton, the way he reacted to that pitch, I think he thought it was coming over the middle, and it was really bearing down inside on him. Zink, Braden Zink also told me he throws a knuckleball. And he, he says that he loves to throw the knuckleball into the wind, that the wind actually gives the knuckleball better movement. Swing and a miss. One and two. One and two, the count. Pitches outside. There goes Lloyd. The throw down. Not in time. That's a stolen base. Two and two, the count. Got him swinging with a high fastball. So Lloyd steals second. But Zink attacked him with a fastball, and he got him. For Southwood in the top of the first, no runs, no hits, no errors, one left. At the end of half an inning, no score between Southwood and Rochester. It'll be, and you're watching RTC TV 4. Back in Bob Copeland Field, we're going to the bottom of the first inning. It'll be McLaughlin, Medina, and Reinhardt stew for the Zebras here in the bottom of the first. Against Blaine Hamilton. Again, this is a Southwood team that has struggled on the mound. Their team ERA is over 14. Blaine Hamilton is 0-2. His ERA is 30. In two and a third innings, he's allowed 14 hits, 19 runs, 10 earned runs. He's walked four and he struck out one, and he's also given up four homers in two and a third innings. So, again, this is a... A young pitcher getting used to the varsity mound and taking on a lineup that has been red hot. Let's see how he handles it. And Rochester hitting 337 as a team and averaging just under 10 runs a game. And it will also be interesting to see if Rochester can get their running game going with Mo Lloyd behind home plate. This is a Rochester team that 
averages about four and a half steals a game. First pitch, Hamilton to McLaughlin. Foul ball. We've talked about how hard it is to defend Tarek. You have to honor his ability to bunt. He can pull the ball, and he can also hit the ball with authority to the opposite field. Inside. One and one. Ground ball. Put in play. And that's an easy out. Nice job by Ryan Dieter to handle that one. One up, one down. We'll bring up Ethan Medina. Ethan hitting 438. No homers, 12 RBIs. Rip to right field. Base hit. Renner first one out, and that'll bring up Tanner Reiners, the freshman DH. Tanner hitting 467. No homers, but he's got 12 RBIs. Pitches outside. Lloyd pops out of his crouch. It takes a look at Medina. Ethan not going anywhere. 1 0 the count. Throw back. Deer bobbles it, no chance. Inside. Remember, Mo Lloyd is the quarterback on their football team. If that, if you're wondering about his arm strength, I think that's all you need to know. He's, I know it's a different type of ball, but still. Yes. Strike. Two and one. Reiners went one for four with a run scored yesterday in the win over Logansport. The two one. Fall back. Hamilton looks, slide step, pitch, breaking ball, popped up. Bland makes the catch. Medina will head back. Two down, and that'll bring up the junior first baseman, Aaron Huffman. Huffman comes in in 381. He has a homer and eight RBIs. He hit that homer at Caston. First pitch is high. Manchester's seen some good catchers in the conference this week because that breaking ball is outside 2 0. So Anakin Pettit from Tippecanoe Valley on Monday, and now they got Mo Lloyd. See if. Throw over. Medina back. Hamilton pitches. High. Count is 3 0. Base on balls. Huffman draws a walk, bringing up Evan Elliott. I'm thinking because you have Josh's 
supervision. <laughs> First and second, two out. The batter is Evan Elliott, the right fielder. Evan hitting 265 on the year. He had a great day yesterday, three for four. Wave and a miss. Hamilton pitches. Breaking ball. Ground ball to short. Long throw by Bland. Safe. Infield hit. Infield single by Elliott brings up Jake Cypher. Bland had to range far in the hole, had to make a long throw. It was an accurate throw. But he didn't get him, and now the base is loaded with two out. And the batter is Jake Cypher. Jake is hitting 278 on the year. He's 5 for 18. He has two doubles. Both of them were yesterday against Logansport. First pitch is outside for a ball, as we mentioned. Jake has been working on timing. A ball. Try not to get too far out in front of pitches. Been pulling everything. And he Pull that one foul. One and one the count. Breaking ball. Just inside. Count is now two and one. Again, I think there's going to be a lot of pressure on this Southwood defense. I, I can't imagine that Hamilton's going to be blowing a lot of batters away. Foul ball, two and two. Rochester struck out as a team 64 times in nine games. That's not bad. A little over seven times a game. Whoa. Nice job by Mo Lloyd to block that pitch. That was... Way in the dirt, and it might have even taken kind of a sideways hop. He's able to block it. Count is now full. So this will be the automatic hit and run for Huffman at second and Elliott at first. Here we go. Got him. Look like a breaking ball. Base is loaded, 3-2 pitch, and he got him. And that retires the side. For Rochester, no runs in the first. They did get two hits. No errors and three left at the end of one inning. No score between Rochester and Southwood. You're watching RTC TV 4. We're back at Bob Copeland Field. It'll be Denny, Pershing, and Dieter due for Southwood here in the top of the second. No score. Excellent job by Hamilton to strike out Jake Cipher with the bases loaded to get out of a tough bottom of the first inning. Did anybody see the way the Tigers Twins game ended in Minnesota last night? It was as if they had been watching the Rochester Logansport game and wanted to replicate that. There was a ball was dropped. There was a there was a rundown. There were two guys at third base briefly, and then they threw the ball in the left field. And the defense had shifted all the way over. That by the time they'd thrown the ball in the left field, it was it was like, boy, I just thought I'd just seen that. Now batting, number 23, Jared Denny. All right, Jared Denny leading things off for Southwood here in the top of the second. 
Jarrett wearing number 23. He is a sophomore. He's 167, one RBI. First pitch by Zink is low. Line drive to right. That's a base hit past the diving Gavin Young. Lead off hit for Southwood here in the top of the second. I'll let her bring up their sophomore second baseman, Luke Pershing. Pershing's hitting 214. No homers and one RBI. Let's see if he's up there to bunt. Zing steps off. Just high. Want to know the count? Throw over the runner back. It looked like Denny might have been leaning there for a second, but he was able to get back quickly. Sink looks in for the sign. Pitches. Strike. 1-1, one one, the count to Pershing. Breaking ball low and away. 2-1. back. Denny is back. Popped up falling on a play. Two and two. Softball update. Southwood leads Rochester four to nothing. Top of the second over at Fansler. Pitch is high, three and two. It's a pretty long competitive history of baseball games between these two schools. It seems like they've always played close games against each other, especially when they play at Southwood. Southwood won five to nothing last year at home, but a number of Games decided in the seventh inning or even later than that. Got him. Strikeout number four. Now batting number 12, Ryan Dieter. And that'll bring up the first baseman, Ryan Dieter. Dieter's a sophomore. This is just a six that batted the year. He's over five. Throw back. And Denny's back. One try, put in play. Huffman will win the race to the bag. Sacrifice. Three unassisted. Sacrifice bump brings up number 25, Jared Kraft. There's now a runner at second with two outs. That'll bring up Jared Kraft. He is a senior. He's their right, the right fielder. Jarrett Kraft is hitting 250 on the year, 3 for 12. Swing and a miss and a breaking ball in the dirt. Strike two. So a swing and a miss and a breaking ball in the dirt and then a fastball. 
Now he's got Jarrett Craft set up in a number of ways. McLaughlin trying to keep the base runner close at second. Pitch is fouled off. Outfield playing pretty straight away. Line drive caught by McLaughlin. Terry got a good jump on that and ran it down. For Southwood in the top of the second, no runs, one hit, no errors, one left. We played an inning and a half at Bob Copeland Field. No score between Southwood and Rochester, and you're watching RTC TV4. Back at Bob Copeland Field, and we go to the bottom of the second. It'll be Campbell, Young, and Faverda. Due for Rochester. No score here. Scoring update. Tippecanoe Valley softball leads Peru 2 to nothing in the top of the second. Northfield softball leads Wabash 3 to nothing end of the second. First pitch from Hamilton to Campbell. High and outside. Hunter is a 250 hitter. He's 5 for 20. No homers, four RBIs. F two of his five hits have been doubles, so two extra base hits. Low and outside. Foul ball. Two and one the count. Ball three. Three and one. So who's controlling the scoreboard right now? Swing and a miss. Three and two. It's another full, pot, full count pitch for Hamilton. Let's see who handles it. High base on balls. A leadoff walk. For Hunter, that's the second walk of the year, and that'll bring up Gavin Young. Gavin, a sophomore. Hitting 176. Three for 17 is Gavin. He has two RBIs. First pitch is fouled off. We've said that Southwood, the entire Southwood pitching staff is averaging about a walk per inning allowed, and they've walked two so far in one plus inning. Hi. One and one. Breaking ball in the dirt. Two and one. Popped up. It's foul. Can Dieter run it down? Nope. In amongst the spectators. Two and two. Kind of overcast. A little bit of sun again. Tem temperatures around 50. Pretty chilly. 2-2. Two, two. Hit by a pitch. First and second with nobody out. So a couple lapses in control for Hamilton early, and we're going to have a mound visit with Coach Swinson.
curious to know if is he talking entirely to Hamilton here? Or is he talking to the entire team? Is he talking to the infield? Is he? He seems to be giving curveball instructions. Yeah. Are they talking about bunt defense here just in case? Colton Faverda is a 348 hitter on the year. Does get out the, the bunt. The throw to first is in time. Sack 1 4. Sacrifice bunt brings up number two, Tarek McLaughlin. Second and third one out, and now Tarek McLaughlin will bat. How intently will they be pitching Tarek here? Tarek grounded to first his first time up. Way in, and it gets by Lloyd. And nobody's going anywhere. Lloyd got just enough that it didn't go to the backstop. And he hustled back there quickly. And the runners do hold. Rounder foul. And Tarek leads the team in walks with 12. He's also third on the team in hits with 12. Reinerts and Medina have 14 hits each. Foul ball. One and two the count. So when you combine... 12 hits plus 12 walks. You, you've been on base 24 times. This is only your 10th game of the year. You're having, having a really good year. The 1-2. One, one hopper handled by Dieter. McLaughlin is out, but coming in to score is Hunter Campbell. And the Zebras take a 1-0 lead. McLaughlin with an RBI ground out, bringing up Ethan Medina. Now Ethan Medina will bat with the runner at third and two outs. One nothing Rochester. So, whoa, that was behind Medina, and Lloyd able to get a glove on it and knock it down and keep Gavin Young over at third base. So Young was hit by a pitch, went to second on the sack button, moved to third on the RBI ground out as that pitch is fouled out, fouled off by Medina, one and one. Popped up. Lloyd goes back. Makes the catch. Nice play by Mo Lloyd, and that retires the side. For Rochester in the bottom of the second. They score one run, no hits. No errors and one left. At the end of two innings, Rochester leads Southwood one to nothing. You're watching RTC TV. Okay, we are back at Bob Copeland Field. It'll be Jaron Kraft, Bland, and Smith due for the Knights here in the top of the third. Again, Zink. Braden allowed a leadoff single to Jared Denny in the top of the second. We've got, got the next three batters out. Now batting number 27, 
Jaron Kraft. Jaron Kraft comes in, is a sophomore. He's the, the left fielder, and he comes in hitting 200. Three for 15, and he's got three RBIs. Line drive right at the second baseman, Young. That will bring up Joey Bland. Joey, the shortstop, struck out looking his first time. Foul ball down the third baseline. Outside, one and one. Good job by Bland laying off that curve. Breaking ball on the dirt, two and one. All three. It's cold out. I don't think the wind is as big a factor as it has been in some previous games. Again, we have some trees that line the ballpark, and it does kind of block the wind a little bit as compared to... That ball is ripped to left field. He'll drop for a hit. Faverda knocks it down. Bland takes a big turn. He'll hold on at first. Smith. Runner at first with one out for Micah Smith. Smith struck out his first time up. And if you go to a game, baseball game at Tippecanoe Valley or Caston in our area, that the wind's going to typically have a major factor. There's no trees kind of blocking the wind. It's kind of out in the middle of, of an empty field. Here the trees will be a little bit more of a factor in Not as much of a factor. Of course, we say that the windscreen got blown down a couple games ago. Smith offers at that bunt try and misses. 0-1 the count. Zink throws over. Just high. One and one the count. And Huffman holding Bland on at first. So let's see if Smith is in the mine and hit the ball to the opposite field with a little more room to operate there. In the dirt. Bland took a step off the bag, but he headed back. Nice job by Cypher keeping it in front of him. Count is two and one is what we have. Oh, sorry. That was a base on balls. First and second with one out, and Mo Lloyd's the batter. Lloyd was hit by a pitch his first time up. And he leads their team with 10 RBIs, and he's hitting with two men on right now. First pitch is high and outside.
strike. Ball too high. Well, he lunged at it, but he didn't move his bat. So he's having the count of two and one. That ability to self-correct for high school pitchers. We talk about it all the time. You walk a guy, can you then keep then get the ball over the plate? That ball is fouled back, so the count is two and two. to mentally stay focused and execute your pitches even after a walk. So it doesn't multiply. Got him swinging. What a job by Braden Zink. Strike at number five. Foul ball to Hamilton. Hamilton struck out his first time up. In case you're wondering, that is the fourth time in 18 at-bats that Mo Lloyd has struck out this year. But again, he also came in hitting 588. Swing and a miss. 0-2 kind of tied him up with a fastball in on the hands. Zink got him swinging with a fastball. Strikeout number six. What a job by Braden Zink. They had first and second with Lloyd and Hamilton. They're three and four hitters coming up. And he gets out of the jam. No runs, one hit, no errors, two left. At the end of two and a half innings, Rochester leads Southwood one to nothing. You're watching RTC TV for softball updates. Tippecanoe Valley leads Peru three nothing top of the third. And Southwood leads Rochester ten nothing top of the third. Northfield leads Wabash 5 nothing, top of the fourth in softball. Don't have any baseball updates in the TRC yet. We'll pass them along as soon as we get them. It'll be Reinerts, Huffman, and Elliott due for Rochester in the bottom of the third. One run, two hits, no errors for Rochester so far. No runs, two hits, no errors for Southwood so far. So let's see how Hamilton faces this the heart of the Zebras order the second time through the order. Reinhardt's popped a short his first time. Hamilton pretty tall and lanky. First pitch is in there for a strike. Like he took a little bit off a curveball to get that over. And the pitch. Just outside. One and one. Popped up. Foul. Dieter should have room. And he's got it. Now up number 17, Aaron Huffman. So Reiners is now 0 for 2. That'll bring up Aaron Huffman. Huffman walked his only time up back in the first. First pitch breaking ball in the dirt. Rochester had five base runners the first time through the order. Five of the nine. He's now, but Hamilton's now retired four in a row. And there's a strike there to Huffman, and the count's one and one. Good. 
just outside, two and one. Foul back, two and two. Land kind of shaded over toward the hole. Got him swinging with an off-speed breaking ball. Good pitch. Two up, two down. Now batting number 14, Evan Elliott. Strikeout number two for Hamilton. That'll bring up Evan Elliott with nobody on and two out. Hamilton, or excuse me, Elliott reached on an infield single his first time up. First pitch is outside. Stocked pretty well to center field. And making a terrific running catch out there. Oh, what an excellent play that was by Micah Smith. Went back on it to his left and caught it at full speed. Excellent catch. Elliott hit that ball very, very well. But out. And that retires the side. For Rochester in the bottom of the third, no runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. At the end of three innings, it's Rochester 1 and Southwood nothing, and you're watching RTC TV 4. Back in Bob Copeland Field, we're in the top of the fourth inning. It'll be Denny, Pershing, and Dieter due for the Knights. Zebras lead it one to nothing. I'm Bal Sitsuris, sports editor at RTC. I'm joined by Damien, helping out with production here in the press box. And I'm also a sports writer. My writing can, is, appears at rtc4sports.com. Covers seven different high schools. Jared Denny will be leading off for Southwood. He's one for one. He singled his first time up. One of being stranded at second base. Ball one outside. Grounder right side. Can Young get there? Nope. Base hit. Following a single now up number five, Luke Pershing. Denny made pretty good contact there. It was a hard grounder to the right of Young. Found its way into center field. So runner at first, nobody out. Luke Pershing's the batter. He struck out his first time up. Swing and a miss. We mentioned that Southwood played Wabash, lost 10 nothing on Monday in five innings. As uh, Zink throws over and Denny's back. Southwood only trailed that game one to nothing through three innings. And Wabash scored four in the bottom of the fourth and five in the bottom of the fifth to walk it off on him. So it's kind of they're kind of in the same spot again here. Southwood went twenty two and seven last year. They went eight and one in the conference. If I can't, I'll go through the whole starting process. 
Only conference loss was to uh, Tippecanoe Valley, lost 6-3 to three back on May 19th of last year. It beat Northfield, Caston, and Pioneer to win the sectional. Lot only three runs total in those three games. We're finally knocked out in the regional semifinals by Fort Wayne Blackhawk Christian. Lost five to one. Ball, the count is one and one here. To Luke Pershing. Pershing is sophomore. Throw over, runner back. Strike. All right, strike. One. Yes. Six of the nine players in Southwood's batting order are sophomores. A pretty young team. Just low. Cypher tried to frame that. Played umpire said it was a little low, so the count is two and two. In the dirt. That's going to be a wild pitch. Denny advances. Full count. We'll check it this time. And the pitch. Based on balls. All right, so. You're going to set ball zero. Yeah. Ball. Now up number 12, Ryan Dieter. First and second, nobody out, and Ryan Dieter will bat. Now, Dieter laid down a sacrifice bun his last time up, so one would imagine he'd be in a similar mode here. He's the number seven batter in their batting order. You got Jared Kraft, who hit the ball hard, but out his last time up on deck. And you have Jaron Kraft, who also hit the ball hard, his but out his last time up in the hole. First pitch is inside. one nothing Rochester, top of the fourth here at Bob Copeland Field. Pop ball. 1-1. One one. So again, Huffman hadn't played much first base until this year, but he He's looked pretty comfortable out there. Gavin Young is mostly DH. He's at second base, and he's going to have to run, run over and cover. And you had Hunter Campbell over at third base. He hasn't played a hole out there. Again, Reinerts has played mostly third base most of the year. Reinerts is DHing today. You're just joining us late. One and one. Offer and a miss. One and two. So now what do you do if you're Coach Swinson? Do you keep the bunt sign on with Dieter, or do you have him swing away? Dieter came in 0 for 5 on the season, and he's only a sophomore, so I don't think he's had many varsity hits in his career. The 1-2. Fall back. Sink looks in. McLaughlin trails the runner. That pitch is fouled off. One and two. Outfield playing straight away. Medina maybe slightly shaded to right center. Another foul ball. Count hangs at one and two. McLaughlin jockeying slightly behind Denny. Huffman not holding Pershing on. The 1-2 to Dieter. 
Appeal? No, he did not go around. That's ball two. Two and two. Well, Zings had good good luck with the high fastball in this game, but Dieter was able to hold off there. Grounder. Back to Zink. He'll throw to third. Out. Throw to first. Safe. And moving all the way from first to third on the play is Pershing. So fielder's choice, 1-5. Now batting number 25, Jared Kraft. Is this connected? Nope. Runners of the corners, one out, and Jared Kraft is the batter. Jared Kraft lined to short his last time out. Good base running by Luke Pershing. He never stopped, and he goes from first all the way to third. So again, a long fly ball will bring home a run. Pitch is high and outside. Sure. Did he offer? He did. One and one. Southwood's first base coach is not happy with the call. Now the umpires are going to talk about it. I think the Southwood first base coach, he was like, you didn't even ask the base umpire? And they said he did not swing. So the count is not one and one, it's two and zero, oh. And that changes the at bat from craft standpoint and zinc standpoint a lot. Two and zero oh the count. Outside, ball three. Pershing at third, Dieter at first. Strike. Three and one. <laughs> Another strike. Three and two. Curious to know if Jared Kraft had the take sign on both 3 0 and 3 1. Regardless, he wound up taking both pitches and it's 3 2 now. See if Dieter will be off. He's not. Base on balls. Second walk of the inning. Bases loaded, one out, and Jaron Kraft will bat. Kraft lined to second his last time up. First pitch. I think fires a fastball in there, 0 and 1. It's not like it's going to affect the game because it doesn't work. Zink has walked three, he's hit a batter, he struck out six. At the end of the game, I want to. Inside. He has shut out Southwood through the first three and a third. Because it's already been connected and established that it's connected. Zing. A slice step. Ooh, swing and a miss. Hard breaking curveball was out of the zone, but Jaron Kraft couldn't hold up, and the count's one and two. Let's see if Zing can get a big strikeout here. He's already struck out six. Ground ball to short. Throw will be to first, in time for the out. 
Run scores, and this game is tied 1 1. As Pershing scores on the play. Now batting number 16, Joey Bland. Jarrett Kraft advances to second, Dieter to third. Joey Bland is one for two. Strike out in a single. Count is 0 and 1. Oh. So McLaughlin was playing in, but Pershing got a pretty good break off third base, and Tarek just decided to take the out at first. 1-1, one, one, top of the fourth. Swing and a miss. Breaking ball gets away, but the runners hold. Curveball had some bite on it, and Cypher got a piece of it. it. Got away from him, but the runners were retreating as soon as they saw it. Cypher knocking down, got him swinging. Big out. And that retires the side. For Southwood in the fourth. They score one run, one hit. No errors and two left. At the end of three and a half innings, Rochester and Southwood are tied. 1-1. One, one. You're watching RTC. Back in Bob Copeland Field. <laughs> now batting number 23, Jake Cypher. It'll be Cypher, Campbell, and Young do for Rochester in the bottom of the fourth. We're tied at one. Cypher struck out his first time up. Breaking ball way up and in over Cypher's head. Mo Lloyd had to jump out of his crouch. Softball update. Southwood leads Rochester 10-4, top of the fourth. It was 10-0. Hamilton looks in. Foul ball. Well, I would imagine Coach Swinson really has to be happy with what he's gotten from Blaine Hamilton on the mound. Again, the stats we have, Hamilton had about 14 hits and had walked four in just two and a third innings. But he's held Rochester just two hits so far, and he gets Cypher in a pop-up. Ball's caught. One up, one down. I bring up Hunter Campbell. Seven in a row retired by Hamilton. Campbell walked and scored the lone Rochester run back in the second. Strike. One on one. And I don't, I don't think there's anything. It's really unique about Hamilton's velocity, but he's able to locate his pitches. Foul off. One and two. Yes. 
Got him. Now batting number 10, Gavin Young. Strikeout number three for Hamilton. And I'll bring up the second baseman, Gavin Young. Young was hit by a pitch his first time. Floats one in there for a strike. Ball outside. Popped up. Foul. Can Dieter get there? Nope. And there's a lot of foul territory here in this ballpark. So if you're a first baseman or even a second baseman, you might have to chase one a long way. Tough play there for Dieter. Kind of one and two on Young. Breaking ball just high. I think Lloyd tried to frame that one, but couldn't quite bring it down enough. Just a little high, two and two. And that hit him. Has been hit. So Young has been hit twice by pitches, and both times on breaking balls. Runner at first, two outs, and Colton Favert is the batter. Colton sacrificed his only time up. Breaking ball low. And Dieter holding Young on. Line drive foul. One and one. So that hit by pitch and the streak of eight consecutive batters retired by Hamilton. He's walked two, he's hit two batters. But he's only allowed two hits. Outside. Not even sure entirely the Zebras have squared Hamilton up very much in this game. Strike. Inside corner with a breaking ball, two and two. Pitch by Hamilton. Put in play to center. It pretty well, but Micah Smith is there. And he makes the catch to retire the side. Rochester in the bottom of the fourth. No runs, no hits, no errors. One left. At the end of four innings, Rochester and Southwood are tied 1-1. You're watching RTC TV4. We are back at Bob Copeland Field. Rochester and Southwood are tied 1-1 here in the top of the fifth. It'll be Smith, Lloyd, and Hamilton due for the Knights. And this has been a strong competitive showing. I think Coach Swinson has to be thrilled with what he's seen through the first four innings. You talk about one team that's winless and one team that's undefeated. And we have a tie game here in the fifth. Not sure Zink, neither Zink nor Hamilton has necessarily had sparkling control, but they've had pretty. They've been able to get big outs with men on base. And I have a real feeling that this is kind of a, a crucial portion of the game. The the two, three, four hitters are due for Southwood in the top of the fifth, and the top of the zebra order will be due up in the bottom of the fifth. 
This is not an explosive. Now batting number two, Micah Smith. Southwood offense, they had scored, th scored 34 runs in six games coming into today. It's a little, about five and a half runs a game. Came in hitting 282 as a team. They have three hits through four innings. First pitch to Micah Smith. Strike, breaking ball. Smith is 0 for 1. He struck out swinging back in the first, and he walked in the third. And that's this is TRC baseball for you. There's just not many easy games. Just not many. It's a good baseball conference. They're not awful teams that you can just easily steamroll. O and two. One two. Obviously, that Hoosier Heartland Conference is a great great baseball conference with Carroll and Delphi and Eastern and Clinton Central. I'm sure the TRC is as good as that conference, but it's, it's been consistently a very good conference for a long time. Got him looking with a breaking ball. Strikeout number eight. Right, Smith kind of looked like he gave up on that ball. I don't know if he thought it was a fastball, and he and it just dropped right down into the strike zone. That'll bring up Mo Lloyd. Lloyd has been hit by a pitch and struck out. He's 0 for 1. Pitch is high. Ball 2. Ball three. Again, Mo Lloyd's career batting average is 496. 61 career RBIs and 35 career high school games. Base on balls. Mo Lloyd is on base. For the second time today. Then I'll bring up the pitcher, Blaine Hamilton. Hamilton's 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. Let's see if Lloyd's on the move. Pitch is high. Cypher fires out of his stance. Lloyd not going anywhere. And you have a hitter who struck out his previous two at-bats. Is he in bunt mode, or do you let Lloyd run here? A lot of teams put in a courtesy runner for their catcher, but not Southwood. Again, Mose, as we mentioned, he had 158 yards rushing in the football game against Rochester. He's, he's not your slow-footed catcher. Pitches in the dirt, knocked down. Lloyd takes a big turnaround second he'll hold there. We're going to call that a stolen base. He was on the move already. And all of a sudden, it's 2-0. and oh. Six straight balls by Zink. Strike. Got a pretty dangerous hitter in Denny on deck. In the dirt, breaking ball, two and uh, three and one. Zink rubs up the ball. Looks in for the sign. See if he goes after him with a fastball and three and one. He does, and it's a base on balls. Back to back walks. Now batting number 23, Jarrett Denny. First and second with one out for Jarrett Denny. Denny's two for two with two singles. First pitch. 
Fly ball to left. Shallow can prefer to get there. No, drops for a base hit. Low rounding. Lloyd rounds third. He'll stop there. Hamilton will stop at second. It's a bloop single for Jared Denny, and the bases are loaded. Now batting number five, Luke Pershing. That will bring up Luke Pershing. Pershing has struck out and walked. He scored the lone Southwood run last inning. So Lloyd couldn't be sure that the ball was going to drop, so he had to move up to third but stop there. First pitch. Ball one. They appealed down to the base umpire. He said no swing. Ball two off the plate. The Peru-Tippecanoe Valley softball game is tied 3-3 top of the fifth. You can watch that on Valley TV here on RTC. Strike. Two and one. Check that. Peru now leads Valley 4-3 top of the fifth softball. Infield in. Ball three. This thing struck out Smith to start the inning, but the last three batters have gone walk, walk, single. Bases loaded now. Three and one. Strike two called. Luke Pershing. Puts it in play. Ground ball coming in on it and throwing to first in time for the out. Good play by Campbell. But scoring on the play is Lloyd. And Southwood takes a 2-1 to one lead on the RBI ground out by Luke Pershing. Now batting number 12, Ryan Dieter. Pershing didn't hit it hard, but he put it in play. And Ryan Dieter will bat with runners at second and third and two out. And do we have a pinch hitter? I think we do. Dalton Barney, a freshman, is batting for Dieter. Dieter went 0 for 1 while he was in there. Swing and a miss. Always interesting when you're a pinch hitter. You're coming off the bench cold, and you're literally coming off the bench cold today. Barney, a 182 hitter, 2 for 11 on the season. Ball one. Barney does have an RBI in the year. One and one. Strike. One and two. We started him with some heat and then threw a nice curveball over the outside corner there. Over. One and two. Fastball high and away. Knights have their first lead of the game and an RBI ground out by Luke Pershing. Ball three, full count. This is a big guy to get out. Again, the top of the Zebra's order is doing the bottom half of this inning. 3-2. Base on balls, a pinch hit walk for Barney.
Bases loaded, two out. Here comes Corey Good out to the mound. And I think he's going to take the ball from Braden Zing. Ethan Medina is coming in from center field. be Medina to take some warm-up tosses here. Some Ethan in relief against Valley the other day, but in an eight-run lead in the seventh inning. So Medina is now pitching. He had been playing center field. Evan Elliott moves from right field to center field. Hunter Campbell from third base to right field. Gavin Young from second base to third base. Braden Zink from pitcher to sec. Uh, Braden Zink from pitcher to second base. First pitch. In the dirt to uh, Jarrett Kraft. Ball one. Base is loaded. Two out, top of the fifth, Southwood leading two to one and trying to extend that lead. Jared Kraft has lined out and walked. Ball two. The hat falling off Ethan Medina's head. We've seen that a lot this year with Ethan. Two no. Oh. And Ethan's got a great pickoff move, but nobody's being held on at the bag. All back. Two and one. Two and one. Sharp grounder to McLaughlin. He flips to zinc covering. That's a four side, and that retires the side. For Southwood in the top of the fifth, they score a run on one hit. No errors, and they leave the bases loaded. At the end of four and a half innings, Southwood leads Rochester 2-1. to one. You're watching RTC TV 4. Rochester dugout sounding pretty lively to start things here in the bottom of the fifth. We're, in, we're indoors in the press box, and we can hear, hear him. Loud and clear, first pitch is inside. McLaughlin is 0 for 2. He drove in the lo Rochester's lone run with an RBI ground out back in the second. Just high. Yeah, 
Grounder right side. Boy, Hamilton's just done a great job in McLaughlin all day, and he gets him to ground out to second. Let him bring up Ethan Medina, the pitcher. Ethan is single, and he's fouled to the catcher. Well, again, Rochester faced a Logan Sport team that committed 11 errors yesterday. Southwood has not committed any errors in this game. First pitch is high. And Pershing able to take care of Tarek McLaughlin there. Not only has Southwood not committed an error, but you don't they're not easy to run on because of Mo Lloyd's throwing arm. Fouled off there by Medina in the counts one and one. Way in. Two and one. Fly ball, shallow left field. That might drop, and it will. Zebras have a base runner. That's a good hitter. That's Ethan. Keeping his hands back and able to float one on the left field. That'll bring up Tanner Reinhardt. Tanner has popped short, and he's fouled to first. Swings with the first pitch. Hits it pretty well to left center. The ball's dropped. Dropped by Micah Smith. E8. Wow. The center fielder had made a remarkable catch on Evan Elliott's ball in the third inning. That was about as good a play as we've seen a center fielder make this year. And that time... He looked like he had it, but ticked off his glove and dropped behind him. And now Coach Swinson's out to talk to Hamilton. Mo Lloyd is headed back to the play, and that's going to be all for Hamilton. So we're going to have a pitching change here. Bland coming in to pitch. We'll see what other defensive adjustments they make. So it looks like Again, we don't keep track of pitch counts up here. I don't know if if Hamilton was on some pitch count that coach that dictated by the HSA or just by what Coach Swinson didn't want him to go over, but what an outing by him. He pitched four and a third innings. And he allowed only three hits. And one of the hits was an infield hit, and another hit was a blue pit. I mean Rochester did not make much great contact. So there was a great play by Smith on the ball that Elliott hit in the third inning, but let's see how Rochester adjusted this new pitcher. Baseball final, Wabash has defeated Northfield 4 to nothing. So Wabash is now 3-0 in the TRC. Is it Hamilton over at short? That looks like him, so it looks like they just switched their pitcher and their shortstop. That's it.
First and second, one out. Aaron Huffman, the batter. Zebras trail 2-1, to one, bottom of the fifth. Hamilton sneaks behind, then Pershing. Then Pershing moves back into position. The first pitch is a breaking ball by Bland, and the pitch is outside. So looking at Bland warming up, it looked like he was throwing just about nothing but breaking balls. I'm not sure he's going to try and blow anybody away here. The 1-0. Swing and a miss. Yeah, I don't know if that was a change-up or what. But again, the improvement of Aaron Huffman as a hitter, and he was he was flexed out a lot last year. Now he's hitting cleanup. Ball ticks off the glove of Lloyd. Medina takes a big lead, but he goes back. Two and one, the count, which was a ball. Looks like Lloyd just kind of took his eye off, kind of keeping his eye on Medina, and the ball kind of clanked off his glove, but not far enough for either of the runners to advance. Breaking ball outside, ball three. Three and one. <coughs> Swing and a miss. Full count. Three and two. Joey Bland facing his first batter. Got him. Went up and away. First and second with two outs for Evan Elliott. Looks like Bland kind of doubled up on that up and away fastball and got Huffman to chase. Ball one to Elliott. Evan reached on an infield single in the first and then lined to center back in the third. We talked about that great play by Smith. Whoa. In the dirt, knocked down. Medina's going to try for third. Safe. And moving into second is Reinerts. That's a wild pitch, but that's excellent base running. Count is 2-0 and oh on Elliott. Now do you pitch carefully with first base open? Swing and a miss. Two and one. Swing and a miss. One of your senior team leaders up here with two men in scoring position. Zebras trailing two to one, bottom of the fifth. Popped up. Foul. Out of play. Count hangs at two and two. Big 2-2 two -two pitch from Bland. Ball three. Full count. And Evan had three hits yesterday, and he's one for two so far today. Popped up. This should retire the side. Hamilton. He's got it. Nice job by Joey Bland. 
For Rochester in the fifth, no runs, one hit, one error, two left. At the end of five, Southwood leads Rochester 2-1. to one. You're watching RTC. Back in Bob Copeland Field, Southwood leads Rochester 2-1 to one as we go into the top of the sixth. It'll be Jaron Craft, Bland, and Smith due against Medina. You're in the top of the sixth. Softball update. Tippecanoe Valley and Peru are tied 4-4, bottom of the sixth. Southwood leads Rochester 12-6, bottom of the sixth. It was 10-0. Cut into that lead a little bit. Northfield has defeated Wabash 17 to nothing in softball. So Jaron Kraft, Bland, and Smith will be due for the Knights here in the top of the sixth. Jaron Kraft is 0 for 2. He has lined a second, and he drove in a run with an RBI ground out in the fourth. Swing and a miss. Grounder left side, not a hard hit. Medina fields and throws, and he got him. Now batting number 16, Joey Belayan. So Medina got put in a tough spot on the top of the fifth. He had to come in with the bases loaded and two out. Got Kraft to ground into a force out to retire the side. Jarrett Kraft, that is. Then he gets Jaron Kraft on a grounder to the pitcher. And the first pitch to Bland is a strike. Joey Bland is one for three. Strikeout, a single, and another strikeout. Swing and a miss. Got him on a breaking ball. Joey Bland's a good hitter. 353 hitter coming in, and he struck out for the third time today. Two up, two down, and Micah Smith is the batter. Smith is 0 for 2. Struck out, walked, and he struck out again. Pitches outside. The cap flies off of Ethan. Ethan plays out of a, for a travel team out of Warsaw. No, the, at least the last I checked, he did. Foul ball. Strike. One and two. Zebra pitchers have struck out nine in this game. Grounder, left side, not hard hit. Gavin Young has it and throws to first for the out. Medina's faced four batters, got them all out. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. At the end of five and a half innings at Bob Copeland Field, Southwood leads Rochester 2-1. to one. You're watching RTC TV 4. It will be Cypher... Campbell and Young do for Rochester in the bottom of the sixth. They trail it two to one against Bland. Joey Bland came in with the runners at first and second with one out and it, in relief, and he struck out Huffman and he got Elliott on a pop to short. And that was well, they say you don't give good teams more than three outs in an inning room. Southwood gave Rochester a fourth out, but they. Zebras couldn't take advantage. Okay. 
Cypher has struck out, and he's popped a second. Ball. Again, yesterday, Logan Sport committed 11 errors against Rochester. Today, Southwood's committed only one error. They have not given, even though they did commit that error last inning, they haven't given Rochester many extra chances. That one is up, 2-0. Swing and a miss. We'll have to look like he threw like a changeup. 2 0. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, very good pitch. Strike. 2 and 2. Ball three outside. And the pitch. Got him. That might have been another change. Now batting number one, Hunter Campbell. Strikeout number two for Bland, and that'll bring up Hunter Campbell. Hunter's 0 for 1 with a walk and a strikeout. Outside. There you go. Line in the center for a base hit for Campbell. Campbell, part of that junior class, and a whole bunch of juniors have really emerged this year. And Hunter is now one for two in this game, and that'll bring up Gavin Young. He's been hit by a pitch both times up. Zero for zero. Swing and a miss. Oh and one. So, um, Barney holding the runner on. Throw over, safe. Ball one. Inside, ball two. Pershing playing pretty deep at second. Throw over the runner back. Hamilton playing just about a step behind bag. It, we're parallel to the bag. We step behind. Fly ball to center. Can Smith get that? Yep. Two out. Now batting number seven, Colton Ferberta. Hanging on at first is Campbell, and that'll bring up Colton Faverda. Bird has laid down a sacrifice butt, and he's fallen out to center. 0 for 1. High. Colton, the sophomore, came in hitting 348. 
eight for 23, so make it eight for 24. And four of his hits have been doubles. Just high. Ball two. Zebras came in hitting 337 as a team, but they only have four hits in this game. We're in the sixth. They're all over. That's Barney playing at first. Dieter started the game over there. Now it's Barney. 2 0. Popped up. Foul but playable. Should be caught. And it is to retire the side. Jared Denny right there. Or Rochester in the bottom of the sixth. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left. At the end of six innings, Southwood leads Rochester 2-1. to one. You're watching RTC We're back at Bob Copeland Field. It'll be Lloyd, Hamilton, and Denny due for the Knights in the top of the seventh. Mo Lloyd is 0-1, for 1, but he has scored a run. He was walked and scored his last time up. Now facing a lefty in Medina. Let's see how he adapts. Swing and a miss. Ethan's cap flies off his head again. Oh, and two. Boy, that breaking ball that Ethan throws is pretty formidable. Got him looking. Wow. Now batting number 20, Blaine Hamilton. Strikeout number two for Medina. And I'll bring up Blaine Hamilton. Just outside. Hamilton is 0 for 2. He's struck out twice and he's walked. Grounder. Medina flies off the mound. He picks it up. He throws to first for the out. Two up, two down. Then I bring up Jarrett Denny, the third baseman. Denny's three for three. Southwood has four hits as a team, and Denny has three of them. Three singles. Had a bloop single his last time up. Shallow left field. Swing and a miss. Another left-handed batter. Denny came in three for 18 on the season. He's got three hits in this game. Line drive. Knocked down. Picked up by Young. And he throws to first for the out. So Denny grounds out. He hit it sharply. there. In fact, he might have hit the ball harder that time up than it the previous three times where he got hits. A nice play by Young, who didn't start the game there. He was looking comfortable. Seven straight batters retired by Medina. For Southwood on the top of the seventh. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Southwood leads Rochester 2-1. to one. You're watching RTC TV 4. We are back at Bob Copeland Field. I'm Val. We've got Damien and Steve up here in the press box. It'll be McLaughlin. Medina and Reinhardt's due for Rochester in the bottom of the seventh. They trail it two to one. Joey Bland came in in relief with one out in the bottom of the fifth. He's faced six batters so far and gotten five of the six out. But now he's got to face the top of the batting order. Again, uh, upsets in baseball are pretty relative, but we're talking about a Southwood team that came in 0 and 6. They lost by a 10 run rule to Wabash the other day. And a zebra team that is nine and zero, and that has been averaging about ten runs a game, but they only have one run so far today. And the zebras came in hitting three thirty seven as a team. They only have four hits through six innings, and they've been shut. You know, Tarek McLaughlin came in with an on base percentage over well over six hundred, and he is zero for three in this game. Grounded to first in the first, grounded to first in the second, grounded to second in the fifth. He did drive in. Rochester's only run back in the second inning with that ground out. First pitch, breaking ball inside. 
Oh. And Bland really kind of varying his offerings. He's been he definitely has a changeup. He's got a breaking ball. He hasn't thrown a lot of fastballs, but he places them well when he does. Base hit right field. Tarek is one for four. Well, Val is back at the office kind of watching, uh, observing this uh, this game here. And you got to be pretty impressed with the Southwood pitching here tonight. I mean, you kind of said coming in you didn't know how the pitching was going to be. And they've uh, they've been pretty impressive. Their team ERA was over 14 coming into this game. <laughs> right. And they have been terrific. And their defense, they've committed only one error. Throw over and Tarek's back. They've only committed one error. And on top of that, you have a catcher like Mo Lloyd, you're not even really going to try and steal because Mo is just that good. Popped up. Toward the line. Caught by the second baseman, Pershing. And McLaughlin will get back. That was a foul ball. But Pershing ran under it and made the catch. Yeah, I noticed, I don't remember what inning, maybe about the fourth inning there, Rochester had a couple guys on the first and second there, and Mo had kind of bobbled a, a, a play, or, you know, mm -hmm. he kind of missed the ball, but it didn't go very far away from him, and they didn't even think twice about trying to run. They just stayed put. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, the respect is there for uh, for Mo and, and his uh, throwing ability. To bring up the DH, Tanner Reinhardt, and he takes Lowen away. Tanner is 0 for 3. He's popped a short. Fouled to first, and he reached on an error his last time up on a fly ball to center. So he's been hitting the ball in the air today. But he's 0 for 3 to show for it. Throw over. Glothen back. Joey Bland, one of only two seniors on the Southwood roster. Line to left. It'll draw for a hit. Tarek's going to try for third. The throw. He's in there. And in the second is Reinertz. Great base running there by mm -hmm. Tarek. He kind of wondered, you know, when he rounded second if that was a good idea or not. But his speed. And now you got runners in, uh, two runners in scoring position. And a hit. You might be, uh, might be going home with a W here. Second and third one out. Aaron Huffman is the batter. Aaron is 0 for 2. He walked in the first. He struck out in the third. He struck out again in the fifth. He was the guy, he was the first batter Bland faced when Bland came in in the fifth. Pinch runner, Landon Bumford is pinch running for Reinhardt's. And we saw him uh, come in and, and have a you know a big spot there in yeah. uh, what game was that Val? It was the CMA game. Yeah, he did a yeah. great job there. Had a nice steal and was yeah. was kind of a key moment. I think it's fair to say these are the two fastest guys on the team who are on base right now, and McLaughlin and Bumford. Yeah, and Coach Swinson is in to talk to Bland now. One of the things you're talking about if you're Coach Swinson is how do we defend this? Do we play the infield back? Do we get trade a run for an out and maybe take it 2-2 to the eighth inning? I know that's not ideal, but if right. you play the infield in and Huffman gets a base hit by you, maybe Rochester scores two runs and you lose the game right there. Right, right. It's a, it's a tricky uh, situation. There, there's there's, there's, they do it, there's yeah. no easy answer to this question, mm -hmm. I don't think. Huffman's uh, one of the players, I mean, you got to feel good if you're coached good mm -hmm. with him up here at the plate in the situation. Aaron came in today hitting 381. Eight RBIs on the season. Foul ball. Think about it's interesting about Bland is he, he gets that fastball and it's kind of in on your hands and it, you just kind of lift it up in the air and you don't really, you're not able to drive it. And he's, mm. he's very good with how he places that fastball in the zone. 0-1. Foul ball, 0-2. Well, Aaron's going to have to really fight here to stay alive, keep this at-bat going and... 
for softball update, Southwood leads Rochester 12 to 11, bottom of the seventh. Oh, it wow. was it was 10 to nothing Southwood at one point. The 0-2. Just outside. Just outside, yeah. one and two. Umpire took a long look at that one. Yeah, Mo gave him a good opportunity there. Yeah. He framed that up nice and just outside. This umpire's been pretty consistent. He hasn't been giving much on the outside corner all day for both teams. One and two. Fly ball. Should be Left caught. field. Will it be deep enough? It's caught by Kraft. The throw to the plate, and it's going to be late. It's a sack fly, and trying for third is Bumford. It'll Ooh. make it. Big time run there, too. That could have been a... You know, Bumford, another big time uh, job on the bases. Because if he gets thrown out right there, you're out of the inning, now you're going into the eighth, and he's able to get over clean and two out so you can't have uh, anything in the air but if you can get a hit here big time at bat by Aaron Huffman to yeah. make contact with two strikeouts to with two strikes in the count and bring home that tying run and we are now tied at two guaranteed we're at least going to go to an extra inning here if the Rochester Zebras yeah, that's, can't that's, get another run that's across. Southwood's best case scenario Evan Elliott the batter oh. swing and a miss Evan is one for three he reached on an infield single in the first he was robbed on a great catch by the center fielder, Micah Smith, in the third. He hit the tar out of that ball, and Smith made a great running catch. And he popped a short his last time up with two men on base. Ball. And this is the guy you want, Evan. He's a senior. He's faced every situation. And his heartbeat is going to be, he's not jumping out of his chest. Right. He's going he's to want to know how to handle this. He knows how to handle the situation. Pitch is high. Ball two. Good patience there after swinging on that first pitch. Mm -hmm. Cypher on deck. No. Swing and a miss. I don't know if that was a change up or a curve, but yeah, took, a, it, took it, a little off. It's a nice yeah. pitch. He's got yeah. two and two. Ball three, high. Well, you can't get much bigger than this pitch right here. Yeah. Three and two, two outs, right. and a runner on third base. Now, from Bland's standpoint, I don't think you just want to lay one in there. you got first base open. If, it, if he walks him, it's not the end of the world. Got him. Struck him out. Swinging on an off-speed pitch. For Rochester in the seventh. One run, two hits. No errors and one left. At the end of seven, Rochester and Southwood are tied 2-2. You're watching RTC TV 4. Well, Val, back here at Bob Copeland Field, Rochester was able to get that tying run across and force a, an extra inning here. Unfortunately, though, not able to, uh, to get the runner home from third, which would have ended it in seven. So you're going to have an extra inning here. Mm-hmm. Over at Valley, Peru Baseball leads Valley 5-1 to one in the sixth inning. Okay. We know that Wabash beat Northfield 4 to nothing, so Wabash is now 3-0 and oh in the conference. North Miami won. Is that right, Josh? Yep, that's correct. North Miami defeated Whitco 7-1, to one, so North Miami is also 3-0. and oh. Yeah. So Rochester's got to win this game to keep track, yeah. keep pace with the Warriors and the Apaches. Who would have thunk it? May 18th, Wednesday, May 18th, last day of the regular season. Zebras at North Miami. Hmm. Will Could a conference championship be on the line? Well, yeah. We've got a long way to go. But. Mm -hmm. Leading off for the Knights is number five, Luce Pershing. It'll be Pershing, Barney, and Jarrett Kraft due for Southwood here in the top of the eighth against Medina. Medina has faced seven batters and got them all out. Ball one. Manchester is playing Maconaqua today on the road, and that's a 6 p.m. start. We don't have a score update. 
Ball two. Swing and a miss. Perching, one of six sophomores in Southwood's starting lineup. He is 0 for 2. He struck out in the second. He walked in the fourth. He grounded to the third in the fifth. Just kind of a soft ground ball to third, and that drove in the go-ahead run at the time. Ground ball, not hard hit. Huffman stays on it and wins the race to the bag for the out. One up, one down. Six sophomores in the starting lineup. Yep. Wow. Yeah, I mean, Mo Lloyd is kind of their marquee player. He's their only junior. Yeah. And then they've got the two seniors in Bland and Jarrett Kraft. They appealed down to first and say he did not. Okay, so I want to know the count to Dalton Barney. He's a freshman. Barney walked as a pinch hitter back in the fifth in his only time up. Popped up, foul, out of play. One and one. There have been a lot of Barneys that have gone through Southwood over the years. Um, mm -hmm. And they've all been really good athletes. Inside. I don't know if that's if Ethan throws like a cutter or a slider, but he's not afraid to go in on the hands of right-handed batters. Yeah. Kind of rode up in there, didn't he? Yeah. It? Swing and a miss. Ooh, that was a nice high fastball. Yeah. And I don't know if you saw that pitch he struck out Mo Lloyd on, but that was... Wow. The, you don't see Mo Lloyd struggling at a bat like that. But yeah. Th threw some sweeping breaking balls at him. Got him. Fastball. Two up, two down. Strikeout number three for Medina. That's one of the things I noticed, uh, you know, watching it at the office. They seem to do a pretty good job keeping Mo in mm -hmm. check there yeah. at the plate. Strike. Mo came in hitting 588, but he's 0 for 2 today. As for Jarrett Kraft, the batter up there right now, he's one of their seniors. And he's 0 for 2. He's lined a short, walked, and grounded into a force out. That was one of the big plays in this game. He grounded a force out with the bases loaded and two out. Kind of fisted, not hit hard. And Zink bobbles, throws. Got him to retire the side. Good job there by Zink to recover after a little bobble. For Southwood, no runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. At the end of seven and a half, Rochester and Southwood are tied 2-2, and you're watching RTC TV. Zebras get it done in the top of the eighth, going to the bottom, see if they can uh, close this thing out here, Val. Softball final, Tippecanoe Valley defeated Peru 7-5. 7-5. Yep. So Valley now 3-0 and in the conference, and they bounce back from that tough loss to Pioneer yesterday mm -hmm. when uh, somebody named Haley Kripe hit two homers and had five RBIs and had 20 strikeouts in the circle. <laughs> 20 strikeouts, that's just crazy. Mm -hmm. I saw that. That's... Against a good hitting team. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. I'm guessing that uh, she might have been a little bit uh, motivated in that one. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Looking for a uh, pioneer playing North Judson today. We haven't gotten an update, but uh, mm -hmm. the top-ranked Lady Panthers back in conference play. Yep. All right, Jake Cipher is up. He's 0 for 3 today. Strikeout, pop to second, and another strikeout. First pitch by Bland, low and away. We'll get our first look at the Panthers this year on Friday yeah. as they take on big 4A Harrison. Mm-hmm. Ball two. We will be back down at uh, Caston tomorrow night. Another big non-conference game for the Comets taking on Tiffany Valley Vikings. Yeah. Ball three. Cypher was asked about the team's base running after the game. He was like, I don't know. I don't run the bases. <laughs> <laughs> Strike three and one. I think, again, that's high school pitching is just different. I mean, a 3-0 count, leadoff batter, and you threw a 3-0, like, changeup, I think. Strike two. He threw another off-speed pitch, 3-1. and one. Yeah. Southwood as a team had allowed nine home runs and 32 innings prior to today. 
But there's been nothing that scraped the fence at all. And there's a shot up the base middle. Base hit to center for Cypher. Well, that. That's impressive, and that's a sign that he's. We talked about timing, and he's getting his timing down. He goes, "I was too early, following balls down the third base line all the time." Now he's. Now he hits balls up the middle, and there's a pinch runner coming in. Who is that? That's Drew Bowers. Is that Drew Bowers? Sure looks like it. Ball one high to Hunter Campbell. Hunter has walked, he struck out, and he's singled. Let's see if he's in bunt mode here. He singled against Bland last inning. Fly ball to left. Should be caught. And it is by Kraft. So they don't bunt. Campbell flies out, and that'll bring up Gavin Young. Gavin is 0 for 1. He's been hit by a pitch twice, and he's flown out to center. Again, that's Corey Good trusts his hitters to make contact and to do some damage. Just high. Strike. One and one. Can Barney holding on Bowers at first? Swing and a miss. Outfield playing straight away. Yeah, but Young's got to protect here. One and two. Got him. Now batting number seven, Colton Verbala. Two down. Strikeout number four for Bland. Getting, he gets some big swings and misses when he needs them. He doesn't doesn't <laughs> doesn't look like yeah. a team with pitchers that were uh, shooting around fourteen. I mean, this their their pitchers are just on tonight. Yeah. Ball two. Colton Faverda is 0 for 2. He's laid on a sacrifice bunt, flied to center, and he fouled to the third baseman his last time up. As I mentioned, Colton is better than your typical nine batter. Hitting 348. Low. Ball three. He had that big hit in that Delphi game. Mm -hmm. That's one of the big hits in that game and one of the big wins of the season for the Zebras. 3 0. Yeah. It takes a strike. Will he get another take sign here? It's interesting. It's 2 to 2. We're in the eighth inning. All four runs scored in this game have come on outs. 3 and 2. RPI ground out by. Jaron Kraft in the fourth, and an RBI ground out by Luke Pershing in the fifth for Southwood. RBI ground out for McLaughlin. Throw to first, runner back. RBI ground out for Tarek McLaughlin in the second, and a sack fly by Huffman in the bottom of the seventh. So hmm. all the runs scored in this game are coming outs. That's good, Drew. Three two. Base on balls. That was a great at bat. A lot of patience shown there by Fervida and now you're back up to your uh, number one hitter, so this is the man you wanted to play here. Mm -hmm. First and second, two out. McLaughlin singled and scored last inning. And pretty good speed on the bases here with Bowers and Faverda. 
If only Bowers' run means anything now. First pitch is high. The 1 0. Outside. It was just a kind of a curveball that Plan maybe didn't have a good grip on. So, pitch. There's a Hammer shot. Hammer to right and deep. And it drops. The Zebras will win. The Zebras will win. Bauer scores. Tarek's the hero. Walk off RBI double by Tarek McLaughlin, and the Zebras are still undefeated. What a day for Tarek. He didn't get off to a good start. He was 0 for 3, but a big hit in the 7th and an even bigger hit in the 8th. Zebras are now 10-0 uh, overall. They are 3-0 in the TRC.